we were in St. Martin on vacation. My niece, my girlfriend, um, we were just there to have a good time. We were there to enjoy ourselves. We probably, we found out, we knew about the hurricane when we got there. And it was very questionable as to what it was gonna do. Um, when we got there Saturday, they didn't really know what was gonna happen. They didn't have a clear, clear picture. So we went about our vacation. We were having a wonderful time. It's beautiful. St. Martin is beautiful. We were really enjoying ourselves. Um, it was probably Tuesday where it really started getting serious as to this is gonna be a problem, folks, and, and we need to batten down the hatches and, and we need to make a plan. Um, and, and that's what we did. We went to the grocery store, we got our groceries, we prepared, we were assured that we were in a safe place, that everything was gonna be good. Our resort was actually moving people from the beach level up to our buildings. We were confident everything was gonna be okay. And we went to bed that night. And we were awoken at four o'clock in the morning by very, very strong winds. And uh, it, it got bad to worse quickly. Quickly, we were all sitting in our living room and our, our roof blew off. It just blew off, bare sky, there it is. We retreated with seconds into our bedroom. Um, we maybe had less than five minutes in our bedroom trying to gather ourselves. We were in our pajamas and the roof blew off of the bedroom. We, we thought we were going to hunker under a mattress in the closet and the roof blew off. Thank goodness there was uh, an indoor stairwell and we were able to escape down into that. Um, the woman who was downstairs had told us the night before, I'm going to leave that door unlocked just in case. So we were able to get into her bathroom. She had two young children with her. We were there, it was probably a good 45 minutes, an hour, um, waiting out that part of the storm. Uh, the water was coming into the bathroom. It was up to our ankles. It, it was ugly. I was sitting by a crack in the door and I could see through the crack in the door that within minutes of us being in that bathroom, her unit blew apart. Debris, I could see flying flying by and I didn't want to say anything because I didn't want to scare the kids so I kept that to myself and when the eye of the storm came you could hear it a, a silence except for the wind just 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 a silence in the air you could you could hear it so I opened up the door and checked and some people from the unit next to us had come out and started calling for people to see if they could help them so we we got out of there too sweet Toot sweet, we got out of there and we were able to get into another unit where the wind wasn't coming directly at us, but by us. A family let us in um, and we waited out the rest of the storm there. That took about probably another two hours before it was safe to be outside and the things we saw. I saw a Jeep fly across my window like it was a piece of paper fluttering in the wind. It, it, was, it was scary, it was scary. When we left the building, every single car on the street was just flipped over towards our units. We had heard those crashes during the storm, didn't know what they were, but we had heard them. There was a little parking lot area and there were three cars stacked on top of each other. Alarm, car alarms going off, um, uh, just, just pure chaos, pure chaos. Um, we were worried pretty quick. We were worried pretty quick. Uh, we got our wits about us when the storm was over. My niece and I were able to go back into our room very quickly and as safely as possible and grab the food and water that we could because we did what they told us to do. We got our groceries. We needed to get them. And we grabbed our luggage and we headed right down to the lobby. Not that that was just something we said, that's where we need to go. That's going to be the central hub of things. We need to go down to the lobby. And, and sure enough, a lot of people had uh, Simpsons Bay Resort is where we were on St. Martin. And uh, shout out to the staff. Trinity Houston, I love you. I love you. She was amazing. They, they mobilized right away. All of the staff, it, within 24 hours, they were on grounds taking care of us the best they could 24 seven. We had heard and got confirmed later on from other hotels, the staff left. They took the food and water that was there and they left. And these buildings were destroyed, destroyed. 
90% of our rooms at our resort destroyed. Next door, 95% of the rooms destroyed. You couldn't live in them. So then the next race was to get us all shelter. And they were fantastic about it. Um, they had a couple areas in the main building, the visitor center, the gym. We were kind of mobilized there while they got a head count. They took our names and passport numbers right away and started making lists. Um, giving us food and water right away. When we got into the lobby, there was water, there was snacks, um, and, and people were there that you could talk to. We were able to get another room that night. Um, a staff person, uh, Pedro Blas, love you too, buddy. He made us mango flambe and cherries jubilee the night we got there. Wednesday night, he gave us his room, and we had some place to sleep. We had some place to sleep. We had some place where we felt safe. It was a dire situation quick. It was a dire situation quick. Um, we, we had to think on our toes. We had to watch our backs. The, the, the arguments started happening the very next day. People fighting in the lobby over food. But, but I'll tell you, our, our people there, they did not fool around. Each and every one of them took care of us. They kept feeding us. They said they could feed us for the next three days. So we were off on Wednesday. We were off on the third day. We got off um, of the island on the third day, which would have been Saturday. Um, love every, every, every member of the military that helped us because I, I wouldn't be alive right now. I, I believe that because of the stories that we have heard afterwards of the devastation, the desperation, the things that people are doing. I wouldn't be alive if, if our U.S. government hadn't come and gotten us. And, and I have a, a whole new appreciation, whole new appreciation. I, I mean it. I mean it. I, I, I come up to you all and I shake your hands. What I really want to do is just kiss you right on the lips. <laughs> well, the first thing that happened um, through, again, Trinity, the, the constant communication that she had, that was like her job, the U.S. government. She was a U.S. citizen, her job, and she was just there as a consultant. She didn't really work at the resort. She had been there for six weeks as a consultant for them. Took charge. Took charge. She got in touch with the U.S. government as soon as she could. Um, she organized all of us together. The first thing that happened was on Friday afternoon, it was about um, 2 o'clock, and she said, I've gotten word that the planes can land at the airport. That's what I know right now. I know that our government is coming for us. So she had us gather our things and be back at the lobby at four o'clock. That's what was, we were supposed to leave Friday. So we're at the lobby for quite a while and, and people converging, w word spread fast. Word spread fast because people were coming from other resorts to be with us. And then I think it was about 4.30, she had to stand up and she was crying. I'm sorry, I'm so sorry, we can't do it today. It's getting dark, they can't do it in the dark at the airport, we have to go back to our units. Um, and, and there was, it wasn't chaos up there, but there was no way they were going to organize that group of people. And honestly and truly, I think that they learned that right then and there, because then what we later found out happened about four o'clock in the morning, they turned the electricity on for us that night and they said they weren't going to, we were grateful. Let me tell you, we got a lot done quick. <laughs> um, and, um, so I guess at about four o'clock in the morning, they started going door to door in the hotel and getting out moms, babies, and people who were ill, people who were injured. Uh, I believe we had one person on resort who had a broken arm, um, a lot of bumps and cuts and scratches and bruises, of course, but no one was seriously injured and we had no fatalities at the resort. And that's how they proceeded. Uh, they brought us, uh, so we got a knock on our door at about 6 a.m., moved quick, moved quick, and they brought us into the visitor center and put us on buses. They had mobilized buses. They probably sat maybe 20, 25 people. I did. They were island. They were regular local island buses, and they brought us to the airport. And uh, not too long after that, an American plane landed. Yeah, the feeling, the feeling. It, it was, I, I can't even put it into words. I, I swelled. I swelled to wanting to burst. So we were at the airport a good probably three hours. Um, they were mobilizing many planes. Of course, again, moms, babies, 
they were still getting some of those folks coming. They were getting on, on the first planes. I think while we were there, I saw a total of four American planes. Um, my understanding is, is we got on the last one that day. Um, and it, it, just the feeling, just, oh my God, we're getting out of here because we knew our lives were in serious danger if we had to stay there. And uh, got on that plane willingly and listened to that noise and just just couldn't stop smiling. Um, <laughs> we did a selfie right at that moment of the three of us and, and it's, you can't even see my eyes, it's ear to ear. Um, and then we took the 45 minute flight over here with a great group of folks Great group of folks. They really watched out for us. Um, even when we got here to the airport, got through, you know, some Red Cross, some snacks, some, you know, some paperwork, some things to do. When we came out, they, well, they had given us a list of hotels uh, while we were in the Red Cross area. And uh, when we got out, I, I knew that I needed to come to the Sheraton. So I came out and there was military at the airport door. Each and every one of us, where do you need to go? And I was like, well, well, the Sheridan. And he was dressed in, in a T-shirt that had U.S. Army, but he came at me so quickly. And I looked at the military guy and said, can I trust him? Oh, yeah, yeah, no, he's with us. He's with us. They brought us to our hotels. They not only brought us to our hotels, they waited to make sure that we could secure rooms. And uh, that's the story. That's the story. Saturday night was hard. Saturday night was hard. I... Um, I didn't wait very long to lose it because it happened at the front desk when I was checking in and, and I knew and I had told my, my people that were with me, I said, this, this is what's going to happen. I says, you know, I got your back right now and everything's great, but I'm going to lose it. Um, and I did. And uh, we were very disappointed at first to learn um, that we weren't going to be able to get a flight out until Friday. Uh, so it was making it a, a little hard for us to even enjoy being here because we really want to get home to our families. Uh, the next morning, I mean, we showered twice, I think. <laughs> we had a good hot meal, um, but, but Saturday night was difficult. We didn't sleep very well. And uh, Sunday morning, I found out that we were able to get flights uh, home on Wednesday night. Um, so that, that made us a little bit better. And We've just spent the day decompressing, you know, lying by the pool, um, talking about this a lot, watching the videos a lot. Um, and and we're, we're just waiting for Wednesday. We're just waiting for Wednesday. We want to go home. Awesome. Like I said earlier, I owe my lives, our lives, to the people that came and got us off that island. Donald Trump, thanks for being a patriot. If you ain't nothing else, thanks for being a patriot, man. I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding because I owe my life to the military of the, of the United States right now.